Last topic of the day, I want to talk about digital citizenship. Uh, when Charmaine and I talked about it, I, I wanted to sway, stay away from this a little bit because I think um, digital citizenship often just revolves around rules. So I want to take a little different slant about it because I, I believe digital citizenship for, for me is all about role modeling. Uh, I'll begin with this, and uh, it's it's not to put parents on the on the hot seat, but certainly I believe that digital citizenship really needs to start at home. I'll give you an example that I've written about before, and, and I think it, it hits home. Um, one of our schools has an archery club, and I want you to imagine if the supervisor just threw out the targets, threw out the bows and arrows in the middle of the gym floor and said, have at it. Right? Um, we'd probably get a pretty good chuckle out of that, um, because we, we know how ridiculous it sounds, and I'm sure that the insurance providers would have a coronary. Before you would ever allow students to engage in archery, you know that you would have put in some teaching and you'd ensure some safety protocols. And uh, in essence, you'd, you'd, you'd protect kids. And yet, think what we do with technology. We buy our children technology, and then we let them use it without any proper training, with little attention to, to safety, and quite honestly, with poor role modeling. Uh, most parents don't know how to role model uh, effective digital, digital citizenship. So I know as an educator that that's really frustrating and we'd like to say, well, if only the parents did that and that would be nice, but the fact is they're coming to us. And so if they're coming to us without these skills, uh, then let's make sure we role model them. Uh, so when we're interacting with them digitally, uh, they, they see us and they say, okay, that's what we're supposed to do. So I try a couple of things when I'm engaging in social media. Uh, the first thing that I would say is I really try and stay on script uh, with education. So even though my Twitter account is personal, I'm still the superintendent of schools for Holy Spirit and they pay me. And there is no way that I should be embarrassing them. So that the script piece is really important. I'm guarded about what I tweet and but in saying that it's not that I'm that I shy away from controversial topics because I think that's really important to, to make sure you, you push the envelope out there. Uh, what is, what's possible. Um, but I always try and make sure that when I'm sending a tweet out, when I'm forwarding a message, that uh, the message that I'm sending is the message is going to be received. I try not to engage in Twitter arguments as well. I've been in a few of them, uh, and I can say this very clearly, you just lose, right? Um, because there is no face, um, you're not accountable. So when I send a tweet and it's countered, I weigh it out to see the potential, whether it's going to be continued learning for me or whether it's going to be a fight that I, if I respond. And quite honestly, if it's going to be a fight, I just don't respond. Uh, if I have a situation where I'm, uh, there's someone who uh, I feel is very inappropriate, trying to get a rise out of me or just some public attention, I block them. If, if I think it's worth blocking them, block them. Uh, and I think that's, that's fair to, to do. But there's another piece that I do with tweets, and it's, uh, it's one of those balances, balance pieces, but I think it's really important. Superintendent is superintendent is superintendent. No matter how good of relationships I have out there, I'm still the superintendent. Uh, I'm that guy in that office over there. And so one of the things to make myself a little bit more approachable is I do tweet a little bit about my personal life. So if you're checking my, my uh, Twitter feed, yeah, you'll see uh, that you know, I've talked about my wife and, and our anniversary, or uh, I've wished our, our son or daughter a happy birthday. And of course, as a, as a proud grandpa, um, I'll tweet the odd photo of our, of our grandson, Carter. Because what it does is, although I'm a professional educator, it shows that I have a personal side as well. But the balance always needs to be in favor of the professional side, or don't use it for division, right? Don't use it for division. Uh, unfortunately, teachers need to understand this, leaders need to understand this, superintendents need to understand this. Um, when I tweet, it's not Chris Smeaton. Personal life, grandpa, father, husband, it's Chris Smeaton, superintendent. And so when teacher tweets some, something out, he will always, he or she will always be teacher first. Um, lastly, in, in terms of Twitter for our division is we use it as one of our communication vehicles. Um, I communicate more often with our press through Twitter. Uh, they direct message me for interviews. They highlight my blogs. 
And because they all follow me, all the radio stations follow me, school closures due to weather are easily communicated. We no longer have to have a phone out list to our radio stations. They pick up the information and they communicate it. Uh, many of our schools have tapped into Twitter as a communication resource too. And what, what's that doing is that's creating a digital footprint for our schools and our division. And, and it's become very, very significant. So I think in my role modeling of the communication, um, of the press releases, of those things that come out of Twitter, I believe that our, our schools have recognized the power that it has to, to be used as a communication tool. So as I said, we have a digital president, presence, and in today's world, it's very important. Um, to finish off, I want to go back to my earlier comments on being a lead learner, because I think this is really essential. It is sometimes very important for leaders to get out front and take on a challenge of the unknown. Uh, the benefits of social media were unknown for quite a while. In fact, there were no benefits, according to many, many people. And so leaders at all levels have the duty to challenge those myths and move us forward. Remember, we can't continue to do what we've always done and expect different results. That's simply insanity. Closing off, I want you to think about this entire uh, conference that you've, you've had today, the, the work session, and it's all around the learning technology policy framework. What is the first word in it? Learning. It is the foundation to everything that we have and need to move forward. And without it, well, you already know the answer without learning. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that the opportunity to video in today has given you some perspective. Uh, I hope you've been challenged to be a, a, a better leader using digital technology and moving us forward. Because in the end, kids deserve it. Have a great day.